Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Christy and today I have a keto recipe for you guys and this one is a family favorite. This is bacon cheeseburger casserole. In my house we do practice lazy keto so we do not track all of our macros. I will have a macro calculator down below for you guys if you want to calculate that. I will have the recipe listed below in full and all of the details and measurements. So make sure you follow me on Instagram for sneak peeks before and after pictures and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of keto videos going on and tons of easy family friendly recipes. Okay let's go ahead and get started with today's. Okay, I know this looks like a lot, but when you check it out, the majority of this is condiments, okay? So you're gonna have these things in your refrigerator anyways. Let's go over your ingredients. You're gonna need heavy whipping cream. You're gonna need mustard and ketchup. There are two that are my favorites. I like the Primal ketchup and also the G Hughes sugar-free ketchup. We're gonna go ahead and finish using up the G Hughes sugar-free and then we'll break out the Primal when this is all gone. Pickles that are also sugar-free. Bacon, my favorite bacon of choice is the Carolina Pride. I think that may just be local to my area, but there's no sugar added into that. You're gonna need some ground beef. I picked this one up at Aldi and this is the grass-fed organic ground beef. Also, you're gonna need two eggs, some cheddar cheese or cheese of your choice. I would um, suggest a yellow cheese though, like sharp cheddar, cheddar, mild cheddar, even Colby Jack, but I wouldn't go with like a mozzarella. Cream cheese, and then you're gonna need seasonings, and I'm using garlic powder, onion powder, and then this is just the 21 Seasoning Salute from Trader Joe's but any burger flavor seasoning will do. I know that McCormick has one, Walmart has a brand, so just pick the one that you like. And this is all you're going to need for a cheeseburger. Let me just say this. This is one of the things that I detest most about cooking is cooking bacon. I hate it for some reason. Um, a lot of people tell me that they fix theirs in their air fryer, but I've noticed that it makes my house smoky. And people have told me that they make it in their oven as well. I've not tried that because I am terrified it's going to destroy the inside of my oven. So if you have any tips or tricks on cooking bacon, let me know. Oh, and look, I made crackers today. These are amazing. So, go ahead, get your bacon cooked up, and we'll set that aside. Okay, our bacon's done. Here is a quick tip if you're new to keto. This stuff right here is liquid gold. So, just let this cool a little bit. This is all your bacon grease. And then you're going to want to store this in a glass container um, with a lid. And I just keep it beside my stove and I use this to cook with. And it gives your food such amazing flavor. Go ahead and preheat your oven at 350 degrees. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and brown up our hamburger meat and add our seasonings to that. I just use this little chopper thing that I picked up at Walmart. This thing is so handy dandy. If you don't have one, it is life changing. So again, this is just our grass fed meat and I'm just going to get this good and crumbled up and browned and go ahead and add our seasonings. Again, if you don't want to use um, garlic powder, you can use minced garlic, and if you don't want to use onion powder, you can chop up some onion, but my kids would freak out if they found an onion in their food. So that's why I use garlic powder and onion powder. Okay, into my beef, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my hamburger seasoning. This one is the 21 seasoning salute, and I'm gonna use half of a teaspoon. I'm 
I'm going to add half a teaspoon of onion powder. And I know I've mentioned this in the past, but we are huge garlic lovers, so I'm also adding half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Then you're just going to mix all this up so that it cooks into your ground beef mixture. If you want to add more of your hamburger seasoning, that's fine. Cook your meat up until it's completely done. You can see there is very little grease in this, but if you do have a lot of grease, go ahead and drain that off because it will just settle on the top. Okay, we're gonna be adding two ounces of cream cheese to our beef while it's still hot and probably on a low setting just so that it melts up. Now would be the time to go ahead and salt and pepper this to the way your family wants it. I usually don't add either of those. We just do that when we sit down to eat. At this point, I go ahead and crumble up two slices of bacon into this beef and cream cheese mixture. This is a 9 by 11 baking dish and I'm just going to go ahead and pour my meat mixture onto the bottom of this and then spread it out evenly. Okay, so now we're going to get together our cheese and condiment mixture that's going to be poured over the top. You're gonna add two eggs to your bowl. Next, we're gonna add in a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Next, I'm adding in one cup of shredded cheese. A tablespoon of ketchup. A tablespoon of mustard. Then you're just going to whisk this all together until well blended. You're gonna take this cheese mixture and you're gonna pour it over top of your bacon and beef. These were just the pickles I had on hand, so you can use whatever sugar-free pickles that you have. Um, and what you're gonna do is just sprinkle those. I can show you where. I did chop those up into smaller pieces, and then I'm just going to put some on top of the cheese and beef mixture. There is no set amount of pickles that I use. I just want to make sure that each time I slice it, at least some pickle is going to be on each little square. So use as much pickles as you want. And then I'm adding more bacon because who doesn't love bacon? This is a bacon cheeseburger casserole. So this is just two more slices of crumbled up bacon and I'm just going to sprinkle that on. And we're gonna cover the very top of our casserole with another layer of cheese. And this is about half a cup, but just use as much as you want so that you get it completely covered. Depending on how much cheese you like, you can use from one half cup to a whole. This is probably about three fourths cup additional shredded cheese. 
Okay, so now we're ready to go into the oven. I cook until golden brown on top and the inside is set and that's usually anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. This time it was in there 30 minutes. It changes, I swear, every single time it feels like. And you can see right here in the middle, I took like a little cake pick and put it down inside there just to make sure the middle was set up. Again, this does have some eggs in it. So I wanted to make sure the mixture on the inside was completely done. Once I pull this out of the oven though, I let it set and cool for quite some time because there is so much cheese involved in this casserole that if you tried to cut it immediately, it would just be a gooey disaster. So I usually let this sit on the stove um, away from the heat, away from the back of the eyes for probably about 10 minutes. So this is what the finished product looks like. You can see that the insides are set up and it's got no liquid in the middle and that's what you want. Now you can dress this up. I like to shred lettuce and put on top. Some of my family members likes to put a dollop of mayo on top of the lettuce and my mom likes to chop up a few tomatoes and put on top of there also. Now, I know tomatoes aren't the most keto friendly food, but my mom is on keto for her diabetes, so she eats tomatoes occasionally. Just doctor this up however you want. There are so many options with this, things that you can add to it or things that you can take away. 